Welcome to the Tea Hut, the podcast for unorthodox entrepreneurs striving for success by going against the grain, breaking down barriers beyond the biscuit tin, revealing what property professionals and construction workers really talk about on their tea breaks. Join us as we delve deep to uncover what it takes to succeed and be the best version of yourself. So welcome to the Tea Hut podcast. This is me, Robbie Dunchow, your host, and this is the podcast for unorthodox entrepreneurs. And this is where we break down them barriers that go way beyond the biscuit tin. We like to delve deep and find out what it really takes to be successful, not only in a property space, but in the business space, in your life, and what it really takes to push past those hard points. Once again, I want to big up Joe Taylor and eGrowth Media for supporting and sponsoring the Tea Hut podcast, as always, if you're in the market for looking for lead generation or social media support for your brand or your business or product, contact Joe and the eGrowth Media team, and they will help you as they've helped me and as they're working with me and providing all that great service and stuff. So without further ado, we're going to get into it now with Mr. Dominic Willis and... I'm gonna, I'll, I'll do what I do with everyone. I'm, I've introduced him. I'm just going to pass it over to Dominic now to give a little intro on who he is, what he does, where he's from, and why he's sat here with me today. So over to you, Dominic. Thanks, Robbie. Uh, thanks very much for the opportunity, first up. Uh, first one for me. Uh, so my name's Dominic Willis. I am the director of PI Building Services. Uh, we are a construction-based company, sort of Northamptonshire, Bedfordshire, uh, we're now in a space where we are developing uh, small residential developments of between sort of four and ten houses, basically. Um, I started as a plumber uh, when I left school in 2004, did an apprenticeship for four years uh, with a company. Then 2008 hit, things weren't great with the business, uh, with the company, so I decided to set up on my own during the recession. But uh, we bought a van, we went out there, started doing like plumbing jobs, basically. Taps, radiators, bathrooms, uh, became gas safe. Uh, and then we sort of, it evolved into sort of a refurbished business. So then we started uh, doing kitchens, like plastering, getting other trades in. And then I think probably something like 2014, we sort of built our first big extension. Uh, and then we've built a few extensions. Then we did a lot of HMO refurbishments and then got our first new build in about 2016. Uh, our first, you know, single plot, just build it all out. Uh, great experience for us. And then since then, we've just grown and grown and grown. Um, we've now got a team of about 10 lads direct for us and then plus all the subcontractors. Um, yeah, um, it's just uh, an evolving journey, shall we say, if you see yeah, what I mean. Now, just, you know, uh, I almost got bored of plumbing, so that's why we went into <laughs> different things, if you see what I mean. And then, you know, yeah, yeah. it's really now interesting to do the, the, the building side and learning all the different like, the bits and pieces that go with it all and then bringing members into my team that have got the, the specialist skills to cover the project management, yeah. you know, groundworks, all these things to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to make all these things come together, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. So you've sort of evolved from being a plumber, um, Got into your, your refurb, started your building company, and that's just snowballed into being like, like you said, like a more of a contracting business rather, Absolutely. rather yeah. than just a plumbing uh, business. Yeah. So awesome, uh, similar sort of background to me, where I started as a one man band and doing gardens, landscaping, uh, and then went on to do commercial groundworks, contracts, price work, boom, and sort of you know like you did, scaled up extensions and all that stuff, um, which is you know, obviously led me to go into developments and you as well, because obviously you've probably spent time doing it for other people. Absolutely. Looking yeah. around thinking, hang on a minute, you know, so yeah. you're similar. Um, but before we get, I know you didn't bring your biscuits in with you, did you? Uh I didn't bring it. No, I didn't. I'm oh, oh, sorry. For fuck's sake. Did I tell you to bring some? You didn't, but... I didn't. I, I, I did listen to a previous podcast and I'm it was dick. about the biscuits. I'm, but... I keep forgetting. I'll either forget to tell people to bring them or they bring them and leave them in the car. So anyway, what is your favourite one? So I've been thinking about this. I think custard creams are one of my favourites, to be fair. Standard. Uh, just, uh, just a good biscuit, nice bit of filling in it, and it's just just it's just it's nice, to be fair. It's a, it's a staple biscuit, yeah, it isn't is. it? Yeah, it's not, a safe one. Yeah, it's nothing flashy, but I, I feel like it does the job well, to be honest. I like that because I, I like a safe one and a custard cream is one if that's in the tin and I'll open a biscuit tin and there's a pack of them in there like my, my nan's got this biscuit tin right and it's an old quality street tin so okay, they're really nice. deep big yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. so she'll split a pack of biscuits in half and they'll both stand up in the tin 
right? Oh. It's got all different ones in there. And I'm looking in there and I'm like, yeah, it's custom. I'll always go for that one. Or I like the rich tea fingers, yeah? Yeah, okay. But yeah, they yeah. go plop, don't they? they do. <laughs> you, have to, you have to triple them up, don't you? And, and dunk them like a fucking trio. Um, so, yeah, I like I like custard creams. And the lads like them, don't they? Yeah, they go, what they, uh, biscuits never last long in the, Mate, in the side hut, do yeah, they? You put them in, it's just gone. It yeah. does, like, it's like Any never biscuit, eaten, you could way. get the rankest yeah. fucking, what are they called, them lotus fucking biscoff things, and they'd be gone. Just gone, yeah. Um, so, yeah, awesome. Mate, custard cream, nice, standard. Yeah. Right, so that's that's the formality, that's all that out of the way. So let's get back into you. And uh, you know, where where where'd you come from? You're from you're from family of four, you say? Four three but three sisters, you say? Uh, I've got a brother and a sister. Brother so and a sister. Sister sorry. that's older than me, brother that's 18 months younger than me. So you're the middle? I'm the middle one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Is yeah. it true what they say? Do you middle child syndrome? Did you get like uh I was probably the naughtiest when we were younger, if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh yeah. Uh but then probably fell into the rugby and then yeah. I don't know. Dad spent a lot of time with me going around the country playing rugby, to Did be he? honest. But yeah. But he, he supported all of us. My sister was a very good golfer, still is quite a good golfer. Yeah. Uh, and my brother was more of the sort of academic one, probably, if yeah. you see what I mean. So, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, no, were, you, were you all close to your dad? Yeah, no, we were all, yeah. I think we were a close knit family, if you see what I mean. So yeah, 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 due, yeah. probably just due to what happened with my, my with my mum passing away when I was only two years old. Uh, we were just a, you know, quite a tight unit. Um, We've got aunties and uncles, and they were there, and they, they were great, you know. We, Close family. We, yeah, and we used to go, but they always li- they lived like an hour and a half, two hours away, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, yeah. Um, one of my aunties was very good. He used to have us for a couple of weeks in the summer holidays. I remember spending summers with her and stuff like that. And, it, you know, family were very good to us, if you see what I mean. But yeah, we yeah, were yeah. quite tight knit as, 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 as a four. As a unit. Yeah, we were. Yeah, yeah. So, I know, obviously, we were just speaking before we come on air, and you just said it there about losing your mum. Yeah. When you were two. Um, it, I'm not going to say how was that for you because obviously you were two at the time. Yeah. So you probably don't really remember it as a, as an event. Yeah. If that makes sense. But how was that for you growing up? Yeah, I think at two you don't really realise what you've missed out you ain't got on. A clue, have if you, you see what I mean. Yeah. So I think it's these times and. Uh, Literally had it a couple of weeks ago, obviously, with Mother's Day just going by and, you know, me doing it with my boys now. Yeah. Uh, and it's special to celebrate, you know, my partner with the boys and all the rest, so it's great. Yeah. But you still feel like, actually, I've missed out on some of that. And I always remember, like, at school, you always had to do, like, the Mother's Day cards in, you know, when you're younger yeah, and yeah, that. Yeah. And we were just like, oh, and they used to make you do you to your auntie or your next-door neighbour or something like that. But it's, it's never, same, it's never it? the same, if you see what I mean. And yeah. then... Uh, I don't, it's a weird, it's a weird one because I never felt like I missed out on anything because you dad, never had it. Yeah, because and dad gave us a lot. If you see, he what overcompensated. I mean. he did, yeah, for he the... did, and he was, you know, he was always there for us. And when you don't know, you don't know, do you? What, if you yeah, see what, yeah, I mean. what, so, what you've never had, you never yeah, miss. And he never remarried. He was devoted. He devoted his life to us. So yeah, yeah. that side of he it. He was a good dad. Yeah, a great dad, and still is a great dad now. You know, and. Oh. I would never be able to thank him enough, if you see what I mean, Robbie. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, I do understand. Uh, uh, and uh, I'll probably get a bit more emotional about it now than I ever did as I grow up, because now I'm a father, I can see, you know, how important it is with your kids and all the rest of it. Well, you're so. seeing it from a different angle now, aren't you? You're seeing it as a parent, and you almost put yourself in... in um, I don't know, I know it's horrible to even say it and think, but it's like, because I lost my dad at 18, a bit older than you were, but I often think, shit, what would my kids be like without me do you know what i mean absolutely yeah you can't help but think it can you it's a horrible intrusive thought to think but you you, we're human our brains work in funny ways right no it does and you know you know my mum died when she was in her early 30s and when you get to your early 30s now you think hang on that's our age man this is what i mean so you go well yeah what if you know and i you know i think the other way like what if something happened to my missus i had to bring my kid how difficult would that be where would we be you know and yeah you know, we take a lot of stuff for granted. So I'd always say to people, don't take anything for granted. Like, you know... You just don't know. No, and, and appreciate what your partner does, especially when you're business owners and you have a lot of stress. You're busy. Yeah, and sometimes we all are stressed out. We come home, we t- sometimes take it out on the family and the kids because we've got other stuff going on in our brains, but yeah. actually we should leave that at the front door when we come yeah, in. that's hard, though, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's really hard, but they don't deserve yeah, that either. And yeah, we need to appreciate yeah. what we've got and what they're giving to us as well if you see what I mean so yeah, I, that, but it's a, re, it's a very hard thing to find and like that balance is is, is, is a really, really tricky hard. one I mean that's why I mean I think of or oh, we were talking about it earlier I'm unemployable and you think you are uh, yeah. are as well and I, I think I am because I like the way my life is I 
I'm I'm in charge of what I want to do. Absolutely. If I don't want to go and do something one day, I won't fucking do it. Yeah. You know, if I do want to go, I'll go and do it. Yeah. That's the beauty of owning your own business or being self-employed and being in control of your day-to-day Absolutely. routine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that sense, because then that enables you, mate. Like this morning on my way here, um, I went and I went and dropped my little boy off at nursery. Yeah. At eight o'clock this morning, and then come straight here, and I was like, if I was like go back ten years or maybe a bit longer. I wouldn't have been able to do that because I'd have been on site at six in the morning That's or half six. And if you were, you'd have got sacked the next day, wouldn't you? So exactly. Like, you couldn't turn up at nine o'clock and go, sorry, I had to drop the kids. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I had to do, you know what I mean? They'd go, fuck off, where's yeah. your missus? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you know, or whatever. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You wouldn't, they wouldn't really cut you much slack for that sort of stuff. Absolutely. Um, so I, 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 I decided that I wanted, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to fit someone else's mode. I wanted to live for me and do what I want to do and what makes me happy. And being there for my kids makes me happy. Absolutely. Because when I'm not there for him, I feel horrible. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? If I have to go away for a night or two or three, or I'm out all day and I get home and I'm there in bed and I yeah. don't, and then I'm doing the same the next day and I don't see him for a day or two, yeah. I feel really fucking guilty. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah, absolutely. And I think when they're young, they seem to, when you miss those couple of days, they seem to have changed in those Mate. two days as well. Yeah. Especially when they're like, you know, like mine. They seem like their heads have grown, they've got bigger and that. And you're like, where have you, what? <laughs> what have I missed? Where have yeah. I been? So, uh, that I makes think it worse, it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And all those little things. But you're also trying to build something for, for them, isn't them. it? So, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It, it's always that sort of push and pull factor, isn't it? If you yeah. see what I mean. But yeah. Uh, I think it's just always just remembering what we've got and be very being grateful. Thank, for, yeah, thankful. Very, absolutely. Giving great. thanks yeah, and actually, no, it is. Uh, actually being present in the moment yeah. and not like, you know, you can be in the room but not be in the room. Definitely. And, uh, and probably me and my missus fall out about this a bit with the phone use because people will message you and when you when you own a bit, like they, can, they think they can message you at the evenings, weekends, whatever, but you just have to like, you need to put it down and get away from it. All, yeah, yeah. I mean? Because yeah. the kids... Deserve they don't know, but, do and they, they deserve a hundred percent of me. Do you see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah. so not me on the phone, not really. When you're not attention. listening, exactly. And I'm massively guilty in that, like, and a lot even recently because I'm spending a lot of place. I've got a lot going. <laughs> Definitely, on. yeah. And I there's often times where I'm sat there and my little girl's going, "Daddy, Daddy, let's do some drawing." And I'm going, "Hang on, darling, I'm, I'm I'm emailing." Yeah. You know, and then I'll eat, and then I'll, I'll finish the email and I'll put my phone down. I'm like, "Why you can't? Why didn't you put your phone down and do the email in ten minutes?" Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, or when they've gone to bed. Do it when they've gone to bed. Yeah, like we but... try now to do stuff, but it's really, it's so hard because people... <sighs> and we live in this now society, don't now, we? Now, yesterday yeah, society. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. Why is it not done now? Why is it not... Why, yeah. why did you do this yesterday? No, so, Always under pressure. Oh, pressure. And that, that's the position we've put ourselves in as, I think, business owners yeah, and people yeah, yeah. who want to succeed because yeah. you don't get Don't anywhere, come easy. You, you don't get anywhere by just cruising through life. No, do you, no, do you no. see what I mean? You know, so yeah. you do have to push yourself. You do have to go above and beyond. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. you won't get the good jobs. You won't make the money. You won't. It's, yeah. I, you'll I, just get the bo- You'll get the low-hanging fruit, exactly. which, which are just going to enable you to survive. Yeah. They're not going to get you to the next level, yeah. are they? And, uh, and it's everyone's different. Some people don't have that aspiration. You know, like, yeah. if you can earn X amount and do this, this, and this then and you're happy with that that's fine but i think probably the same as you you, you just you always want a bit more like i want a bit always. more I, like, I, you know and life's for living man it, you know it, what i mean life's for me like some people like would consider living life to be getting a good paid job and going on free holidays a year with their month off they get and that's life to them and that's yep. cool and i'm not discrediting that because no, no, no. People work hard in their own lanes to get to that. Yep. Like they go through college, uni, yep. uh, promotions through jobs and all this stuff. And I'm not discrediting that and the hard work that people put in because that's a life work for someone. Absolutely. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, what, yeah. what I'm saying is that with all due respect, I am better than that. I can do more than that. I'm, I'm not happy with just being mediocre. I'm not happy with just getting what you're given. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I suppose that's like counterintuitive to what I've always been brought up to believe. Like, be grateful for what you get. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And don't, don't, don't. I mean, how, how's that looked for you? I mean, quite an interesting, probably insight from you, really, growing up with just your dad. Uh, and obviously, you started your business quite young. Yeah. Yeah. So has he has he always been supportive of you in that sense? Oh, like dad, like was great. To be fair with that, so he's. Because he had his own business, but oh, on, a much, okay. on a much smaller scale. So because we lost the mum, my dad's a chiropodist, so yeah, it, like, said, sort, yeah. of, sort of foot doctor type thing. Yeah, uh, he 
was in a practice with another partner, but he decided we convert, he converted the front room of our house. Oh, right. And had the surgery in there. Work from home. To work from home. So you're so, there with you guys. Yeah, and we had nannies when we were younger and stuff, but I remember like he had to have a fire door halfway down the hallway, yeah, so he yeah. shut that. He told us to basically be quiet while he was doing the, like, the patient. Yeah. If he ever came through when we were little, we'd be in a whole world of trouble sort yeah, of thing yeah, because yeah. He, he's trying to do his job yeah. in the front. So... Uh, which but it allowed him to do school pick-up, school drop-offs. Dinners. Uh, yeah, dinners. And he could then... Bed times. But then he would then work, like, we'd, ha- he'd have a, we'd have our dinner and he'd then do a patient between sort of half five and six. Yeah. And then he, when we got up for bath time, if you see what I mean. So yeah, yeah. it gave him great flexibility with yeah, that. Yeah. Um, but he was never one... He never really monetized it, if you see what I mean. So he could have, like... And we he spoke, probably could have scaled up. And... Yeah, or he could have rented the chair out because he, like, like yeah. Friday was always his home visit day. So he'd go around to... Like care homes or all yeah. the people who he could have get had to someone him. else in the chair. Could have had someone else, you know, because he's paid all this money. We had the up and down empty like, room. Yeah, everyone thought it was amazing. We had an up and down chair in our front room. Yeah, sit yeah, on it, go up yeah. and down, you know. So, um, but it was just a norm to us as yeah, well. So, yeah. um, so he got what it was to be like your so, own boss and yeah, all yeah. this sort of stuff. So he was always very supportive of that. And then. Uh, because he had a lot of contacts in Bev, because he'd, he'd been in this business for like twenty years, so he was always he always had my cards on his like little like work desk or whatever. And so when I first set out, he was probably like my biggest sort of champion, if you see what I mean. Always biggest my, fan, yeah. So like any of his clients that came in, he'd give them a card, then they ring me up and I go and do their, nice. t- their taps, their ball valves, their toilets, their bathrooms, yeah, all this yeah, sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And that really helped me in the early stages. And mm. I, I still think back now. I don't think I've had a day off since two thousand eight because I had no work. I've, yeah, no, yeah. I've never had no. And it's, I don't want to sound big headed about that, but. I think if you're that person that will will answer their phone, will do what they say they're going to do unless something terrible Shit happens, up. you know, yeah, yeah. you do get work and you get a, quite a good reputation, good reputation for the, you know, and I was just saying to you before this, like, I haven't really done any marketing, you know, yeah. I had a talk earlier in the week about marketing and they're saying you need to be spending like 10 to 11% of your turnover on marketing. Oh, I don't know about that. And it's, yeah, you know, I get it. Yeah. And you go, well, Okay, that's a lot of money now. That is so, a lot of money. Um, but on the other hand, what have I also missed out on? Because, because I thought, you haven't had that. And I thought I was all right. Brand awareness. See, yeah, exactly, all yeah. this. So that's why we've tried sort of personally in the last couple of months to really increase our sort of, you know, Instagram and social media thing and, you know, taking a quite a lot of inspiration from you the way you've done it over the last sort of like six, seven months from my, me first meeting you at yeah, yeah, Norwich yeah. last year. So, uh, and you've just got to break those barriers down, get on with it and don't be... I find now when I look on these socials, very some of these companies are very generic. They're yeah, putting yeah. pictures of not their own work or yeah, just, so, yeah. you know, we do kitchen, we do bathrooms, yeah. we do this. Do you want great returns on your money yeah. with a picture of a graph? Yeah, and it's yeah, like, it's come like, on. Let's just see real life. So you like, yeah. I remember literally two, three weeks ago, I went on site, just put my phone up with a video. I was like, me, this is me on site. Yeah. This is the house we're building. Said it to my missus. I was like, what do you think of this? Next thing I know, she's already put it onto Instagram. And I, we're like, we're, we're doing this. Yeah, Hang yeah. on. But actually... This is a great thing. Do you see what I mean? You know, like I said to you, my best friend didn't even realise what I did as a judge. That's mad. You know, so... That's crazy. Um, and we, uh, just, to, just to, I don't know if you, we put that earlier, but just to put that into context, you were best man at his wedding. Best man at his wedding last year. You, no. on, you only started your Instagram two weeks ago. Yep. And you posted on there about these builds that you're doing. Yeah. And your best friend, who you were best man at his wedding, didn't know what you did until he saw your Instagram <laughs> post. And that was your best friend. Yeah. Right, so that's just that should literally fucking close the coffin on everyone out there who's not sure about social media. Just, just do it. Just, just do, do it. it. Just what, do it. Because what have you got to lose? You've got nothing to nothing. lose. Nothing. Because you got we had nothing in. So from my look of it, I had nothing in the first place. Yeah. People can like it. They can hate it. They can. They You're going to get haters, man. They whatever can, you they do. They can scroll past it. Yeah. I'm not here to preach to anyone about anything anyway. But, you know. This is what we do. If someone wants us to do something for them, like give me a ring. Yeah, exactly. Because even now, almost websites are like old hat, oh, aren't they? Because because it was what you did six months ago or twelve months ago. Yeah. Like, what I did that in that video it's was what, there. I, what I was doing it's that live very day. today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, Websites are almost like, like you said, like an archive. That, yeah, it's that, like a catalogue of yeah, back, back catalogue. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, oh, we're still working on ours. So Mate, you know, mind, we, haven't, we haven't done it. So yeah, you know I, I mean? haven't like, updated mine for like two years. Yeah, but people still like when when people ring me now, or not every person, but they say, "Oh, your website's great." And I'm like, "Is it?" Like, yeah, I know it's all, it's a good website, but yeah. I, haven't, I don't update it anymore yeah. because it just looks all right, and people are like, "Oh, they look good." Yeah, you know, but so. Yeah, what back getting back to sort of my 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 question was was um I wanted to ask that because a lot of people say and I've I've even noticed this myself, uh, that 
sometimes, and this might not be relative to you, but sometimes the people that are the closest to you are the most po- are the most toxic. Yeah. So I would. So my dad was very good not to judge on anything. So yeah. he like so he used to let you just. Yeah. Yeah, so support you. Support as a hundred, you know. So we if that's did, what you want to do, we, son. Yeah, we all did different things. My sister's a very successful accountant. Yeah, but she did like an apprenticeship in accountancy. She didn't go to university. Okay, so she went and did like, did like day release and then yeah, yeah, got yeah. a job almost. Yeah, and then my brother did go to university and then uh, got quite a good job. And then he, him and his partner have built quite a big like uh, sort of brand in terms of like blogging and all this. Okay. And they live in America and they have a very successful company yeah, yeah, out yeah. there. Nice. Uh, doing all this stuff on social media. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me then 15 years to get into social media, which is insane. <laughs> well, that's mad. Yeah, because that's how he that's makes all his so money. Really. Yeah, oh, no. <laughs> literally bonkers. Um, so we all did took completely different paths, if yeah. you see what I mean. But and Dad was like 100 percent supportive behind you yeah, all the way. All the way, you know. Never, never pulled you. Did he ever pull you aside and say, "Do you know what you're doing here?" No. See yeah. that. See, because because obviously for, from from my perspective and a lot of others who I speak to in this um, yeah. room, you know, we always we've noticed that a lot of those people that are, like, your closest confidants, like, you would speak to about everything, are the people that really drag you down, but not not on purpose. It's from a no, place of love. Yeah, They're and, saying, and risk-averse, really. Yeah, they, that's don't, a, they, they don't want to see failure. You that's see? it. They don't want you to hurt, and I think that's what it is. It's like they, they do care about they you, do, yeah. and in their head, they're only giving you that advice because they care, but in your, in you know, to me, I'm like, don't, Fucking doubt me, yeah. Because to me, that's you doubting my ability. Yeah. Like, don't doubt me. Have faith in me. Tell me that you know you're proud of what I'm doing. Because that will make me want to go and. Yeah. Uh, I suppose it works two ways. Because I'm the sort of person when people say when say, someone says to me, "What are you doing? Why are you doing that?" I'm like, "Fuck you. Yeah, I'm, I'm do- doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Say what you want. Do you know what I mean? Because it's it's just gonna roll off me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and you've got to be like that. Yeah. Because I find it, maybe not your family who are like it, but there'll be certain people. I mean, you might have experienced it already in your circle of friends or wherever they are, your social circle in the pub or wherever you go to socialise. There's always going to be them sorts of uh, fun sponges. Yeah. Energy vacuums. Yeah. Do you but, know what I'm saying? Uh, people will always be very conservative, and then it's sometimes easy for people in like very to good criticize. Po- yeah, and they'll be in good positions. You know, yeah, their family yeah, might yeah. have had some money. They're in it. Yeah. They've got a nice house already. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. And that's good luck to them. Their but, appetite for risk ain't yours. Exactly. Is it? So you know, and uh, has everything I've done worked? Of course it hasn't. No. Like, we are. Like, oh man, I've done some things. Which, it last cost us loads of money. You know. Put, Would you not say that's where you've learned your most valuable lessons? Def- definitely. Um, but. Every day is learning now, yeah, like, yeah, because yeah. you know I think I'm probably a bit too nice in some respects. I am, just, I you know, like and yeah. too friendly. And my missus is like, you've just got to tell them no. Or, no. Yeah, you can't. Why do are that you to, letting them do that? Why you don't, and literally, like, and she's probably like. I don't know, probably my... Uh, she, she's very supportive, but she's also real, like, real yeah, to me. Yeah, my like, missus like, like that. What are you doing? Yeah. Like, you're doing all this, and where's our money? What are we getting out of this? Yeah, we're like, mugged off here. I don't know, really. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you go, and you have to take that little check, you know? Yeah, and, and, yeah. And she is, like... She's so supportive of me and she wants us to do the best we can do because she knows that's me as well because yeah. I always want something new because I get bored. Like I said, you almost oh, got bored of being a plumber and that's why I'm now building houses Same. because, you know, I know plumbers I went to college with are still just doing plumbing. That's yeah. 15 years old. One on, man like, band in a van. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, that, that, but that's fine if that's what they're happy with, if you yeah. see what I mean. But yeah, you I've, weren't. Yeah, and I, I just always want, you know, and I You've still... You've always want, got that, that, that hunger to feed. Yeah, and I'll do this thing and I'm, this is going all right now, but I'm thinking of the <laughs> next, next I'm thinking of the next thing. That's why I'm here. And she's going, what are you doing? Like, yeah. come on. It's give, just so give, erratic. Like, give me a break. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I thought we were doing this now. Yeah, but I've changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm like that with Ali, man. Like, she's very supportive of what I do and every choice I made, but she'd be the first one to fucking call me out on something. Yeah. Or say, what are you doing? Like, yeah. like and what's... Because you've obviously come from, a, you know, running your construction business uh, into going into property development, pro- project managing stuff. What's been your What's been your hardest point of growing your construction business in relation to finding good guys and that sort of you so know, you go, problem? You go for a lot of people that aren't good enough for you. Yeah. So you get desperate as you grow. Yeah. You're like, I need blokes. Because you're getting blokes. all this work in and you're like, where and I, you're like, fuck, I need bodies. Yeah, where do I find blokes? I'll go on Facebook, I'll put an advert on Facebook. Yeah, fucking hell. Indeed or whatever. Yeah, yeah like... 
Like, Facebook's got to be the worst one. The worst, literally. Fuck Everyone's a... You like, get people... You get pe- have you ever had someone's mum or what? someone, like, family member comment on your post going, oh, my son's looking for a job? Yeah. Well, get your fucking son to write on here then. I'm not going to ring you and offer you a job for your son, am I? But he can't drive, so can you pick him up and drop him off? You're like, yeah. no, I can't. He's illiterate, he can't fucking... He can't even tie his shoes, but he's fucking cracking. Yeah, yeah. and so... Oh, uh, so hell. that was... Yeah, so, oh, my God, I've paid so many people, like, yeah, money well, to do... Fu- like, I have shite and then yeah. paid someone again to do it again but oh, yes. it's all it's, it's so that was probably the heart and then you go and then the other thing i think i would say to a lot of business owners don't be afraid to spend money pay the right money pay the for, right the right money. Money for the right yeah, people mate, like, I'm so, so I, I, I you know and i learned that by trying to not undercut people's value but like pay what I thought I sh- that I should pay. So, I could, you know, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, like, if they're good, they're worth 50 grand, they're worth 60 grand. And that's not saying you can't do that, but if you want to grow, you can't find these people that are going to work for £80 a day anymore. That is not the industry no. we're in anymore. No. You know, so you've it's got, not 1990 anymore. It's not. And mm. if you want the best people... And if you're going to be the best, you need the best people around you, if you yeah. see what I mean. And yeah, like, yeah. You're, I, I always say you're only as good as your team. Yeah, exactly. And you always want the best players in the team as yeah, well, exactly. don't you? So, yeah, exactly, um, yeah. How do you find the best players? So keep it as a revolving Simple. door. So now I used to like, it used to kill me when someone left. or someone's It like, used to do that to me. I used to take it really personally. Personally. Because it's like, why? what have I done wrong? Correct, yeah. But then you, when you take yourself out of it and you stop being emotional... And you go, I'm gonna be, I can't do this anymore. I've lost him. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Just it's find just, someone else. Yeah, it's my business. Someone else will come Pay along. Pay him more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that's, that's what I learned. And it's like, I used to take it real personally. Like, yeah. To the point where I'd, I've had arguments with people over it. Like, who the fuck do you think you are leaving sort of thing? Like, I've been good to you. Yeah, you're going to ruin me. You're going to yeah. ruin... Yeah. I've been good I've, to you. I've, I've got work books I've done next this, week. I've yeah. done that, I've fucking given you, I've lent you money, I've done this, yeah. you know, and it almost... And I've done that to loads of people, man. And I've, I've put myself in some really shitty positions because of it. I got emotional over it because I felt like they're taking a massive shit on me. Yeah. When really, taking myself, myself personally, out of the equation, and if I just look at it from above, like a bird's eye, all they've probably done is gone and found a company half a mile closer to home with a pound more an hour and a newer van. Yeah. They're the mentality of these people I'm talking about. And that is all they care about. They don't care about me and my business no. or, or, or the work they're producing for me. And They it, care about themselves. Of course they do. And yeah. their own families. Uh, and uh, uh, and oh, I suppose to a degree we all should be like that a little bit. But actually, yeah. sometimes as a business owner and a nice business owner... You become a bit selfless. You worry more about them than worrying yeah. about, and that's probably one thing. My missus, well, why are we doing it all for these people? Like, yeah. Why are we giving them new? But why are we doing this? Yeah. Why, and I'm like, they're good lads are doing this, and yeah, all that, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. and I'm not like I've got some real good lads yeah, at the moment, and I, and honestly, I can't like they don't cause me a lot. But same. As you grow, you're gonna find people that aren't, and they've got to fit in the team as well. So me, it's all about like, do you fit in my team? Like, yeah. do the lads like working with you? Because yeah. I don't want people. Do you coming... pull your weight? Yeah, and I don't want people coming to the job. He's oh, a lazy what, cunt. Yeah, exactly. Is. Why are you paying him money? He's pissing me off because yeah. then it brings everyone else down. Everyone down, and then, then he... the job fucking slows. Exactly. Knock on a fit. And then you get your good lads resenting the other people, and then they go, "Well, why is he doing this? Why and then is he you're doing losing that? good lads. You're and... like, oh god's sake! I didn't yeah. realize I was a fucking counselor as well. But that's <laughs> you know, this, but this is what no one sort of tells you, and this is where. I've been on this like personal development thing over the last 18 months to broaden my horizons, yeah. see what's about. Because you can be a good tradesman. But yeah. It doesn't mean you're a good business owner or a good manager. No. And this management of people and that is a very tricky... It's, it's really tricky because... I don't want to know their ins and outs. They they just come to work for me between eight and four. Like I don't want to know what they're going through at night. Exactly, but, but it is a bigger picture to it that. Has a knock on effect on what they're doing for you at work. Absolutely. So if they're struggling with something, like can you talk to me about that? And can I make that bit easier? How like, can I help? Exactly. Can I can I make can I do something for you? It yeah. doesn't cost me a lot of time or a lot of money. But what but actually can increases I do? your productivity by fifteen percent here, yeah. which will make me a lot more money in money the long run and give me some more time for you to do something else. Yeah. So those things are. Uh, you need to be like a social profiler as a business boss. If Fucking you see what you know, massively, you know, mate. Yeah, uh, and uh, I've learned more about people since I've started running my business since like before. I, yeah. I didn't know fuck all about business or people before I started my business, and I learned how to manage expectations, manage people, like you said. Yeah. And I think the managing of the people and their emotions and their individual personalities is harder than delivering a job on time. Yeah, def- de- de- definitely. Do you get me? Yeah, definitely. Like because 
to get that job delivered on time, you've got to also man- micromanage all them other little f- elements that go into getting that job on time, yep. which includes these people with fucking emotional dysfunctions. Yep. And that's what I find. Like, you, a little comment you just said there, like, you do want to be an agony aunt. And I always used to joke and call myself Dear Deirdre. Yeah, no. Because I, that's how I felt. It, it, feel, it feels like that sometimes, because you walk around and go, what the fuck's the matter Mate, with you? Like, to the point, right, I'm, and this is a bit like... Like, I'm going back two years, I think, two and a half. I took this guy on because, again, I was in this position where I was getting a few more inquiries coming from my commercial clients and I needed a few more gangs yeah. of guys. So I was like, I need to jump on this now because I know that when that gravy train gets going, like it's a, I could get like a good six, 12, 18 months' worth of work on one site for 10 blokes and I'm earning two grand a week just yeah, off nice. that. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're good little numbers. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, boom, I need to get a couple of, couple of gangs on here. And I'd, I'd done the, the old thing that I used to do, hired quickly, yeah. didn't fire quickly either. Yeah, 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 I yeah. kept the shit yeah, because yeah. I needed the Just, shit. You needed blokes on site. I needed the phone calls bots, coming. But, yeah. yeah. Um, and by doing that, I took on a couple of guys from recommendations from other guys that worked for me. Right. All right. One of these got one of these guys. Well, look, I know these two blokes. They're they're really good. They're mustard at what they do. Blah 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 blah. I was like, all right, cool. If they, can, if they can do what you're saying, then they sound like they're going to be an asset. Let's get them in. Give me their number. I'll contact whatever. I had a phone call with this guy. He's like, yeah, me and my mate, I've been doing this, 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 and this. I've been running my stepdad's company, who's a groundworks contractor for the past five years. He's got 80 blokes. And there's me thinking, Why hang on a then? minute. Why the fuck are you on the phone to me then about coming to work for £180 a day when you, when you just told me that you're running a business where you're turning over 10 grand a month or whatever? I didn't say that to yeah, him on the phone, yeah, but yeah. I was like, okay, okay, oh, okay, cool. Uh, start here, see you Monday, see you yeah, there, yeah. bring your boots, do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, and he was a bit erratic on the phone, loud, fast talking, and I was like, you don't fucking... Oh, I've been about the block a little bit, Dom, right? And I, I, I got off the phone, I thought, he's on fucking drugs, man. He sounded buzzing, do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I was like, yeah, he's yeah, fucking yeah. on something, right? Anyway, I, I, obviously I didn't know him, so I couldn't judge, I'd never seen the guy. So anyway, he started on the Monday, this was like the Thursday... Um, he worked for me for like two, two and a half weeks. weren't long, <laughs> right? weren't long at all. But he was so erratic, like, to the point where he'd be fucking, like... Sw- like, he just started with a bunch of guys that had been working for me, like, five, four or five years. So they, yeah. I knew them really yeah, well. Yeah. He, him and his mate come and started as the new guys. He's been really bolshy, aggressive and swearing and shouting at all, all my blokes so like, that have been with me for ages, telling them what to do. And I'm ringing him up and I'm like, look, mate, like, you've brushed a few feathers up the wrong way this yeah, week, yeah, yeah. you know, you've pissed him off. He's my supervisor. Yeah, you've pissed him off, and he's he's my supervisor as well. Like, what's going on? Like, you know, and he's like, ah, oh, they don't know what they're fucking doing. I'm like, mate, I'm telling you, like, I know they know what they're doing. Yeah, I know that they've also told me that there's what the work that they've seen you do. You know what you're doing. So why are you being like this? And he was just like, oh, mate, I've got a lot on my plate. I've, I'm just a bit, you know, fucked off. I've got things going on at home. <laughs> I'd only known this guy a week. Yeah, right. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like. Okay, that's. I'm sorry about about all that, but why is that tra- why is that coming out at work on your new job that you've just started? You know, yeah. I don't. It's not my problem. You just split up with your missus you've been with for ten years. I'm sorry about that, but that's not my fault. Okay, yeah. so can we curb that attitude at work, please, yeah. or yeah. try to? Yeah? yeah. And he's, oh mate, I'm so fucking sorry. Sorry, mate. So, got all that. Just yeah. sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. It'll all be different. And I was like, all right, mate. He's like, oh, just before the phone call ended. Bear in mind, he just started that week. And <laughs> normally, I pay my guys fortnightly. Yeah. Yeah. So when they pay fortnightly, he'd do a week and in hand or on uh, in arrears. Yeah. And then, you know, you're always yeah. a week behind on your yeah, wages. Yeah, you yeah. understand. So he's like, when do we get paid, mate? I was like, well, it's Friday. Today, obviously, you've just started this week. So I'm not going to pay you for the week that you're still in. Like, you have to wait for that. You'll get that. Yeah, you know, I was explaining. And he was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. Like, it all sounded a bit... And I was like, what's what's wrong? And he was like, ah, shit, I'll, I'm skinned. And I was like, okay, not my fault. Like, you know, I told you before you started, it was fortnightly pay. Yeah. Who gets paid day by day in their hand these days? No cunt. Do you know what I mean? No yeah. one. Don't happen anymore. And he was like, oh, all right, mate, all right. No, so next Friday I'll get a week's money. I was like, yeah, next Friday. He was like, all right, mate, no worries, no worries. Left it at that. Yeah. All right, this was Friday afternoon. Later on that evening, eight o'clock, he's phoned me. Hello, mate. Yeah, you're all right. I don't suppose you do me a sub, can you? I was like, and I've done it up to this point. I've been running the business seven years. 
And I'd given subs to people. Yeah, and I knew yeah. what it was about. Yeah, right, yeah. Friday night, what a <laughs> fucking 40 quid sub, do you? Eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night, want you to run out of bread, have you? Do you know what I mean? And he was like, I need some money, mate. Like, I'm going out of my mind. I've got nothing in the cupboards. God, and I'm like, oh, you've only just realised you've got no pasta in the cupboards <laughs> at eight o'clock on a Friday night, yeah? And I was like, look, mate, I'm not doing it. I said, you're taking the piss. Like, I've, you've been working for me for a week. You're taking the fucking piss. Oh, mate, start swearing at me on the phone. Called me a cunt. Called me a cunt at eight o'clock. And I was like, mate, not having it. So I said no. And I left my phone off and I went up to bed. And I, I think my daughter was uh, fucking hell, uh, three, four months old at the time. And I put her to bed and I fell asleep on the bed. My missus has come and woke me up about an hour and a half later. This was about half 10, 11 yeah. o'clock by this point. She's like, fuck, say, so your phone has not stopped ringing, not stopped ringing for the past two, three hours. I'm like, who's ringing me? She's like, that fucking bloke that you refused to give a sub to. I was like, you're fucking kidding me. And I'm, obviously, I've just been woken up. Yeah. I'm raging, right? <laughs> I'm raging. I've gone downstairs, I've fucking answered the phone because it's still buzzing, it's ringing again. And I'll just let it rip at him on the phone. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? Ringing me up constantly. Well, I've told you no already. And he, he was incoherent on the phone. He was off uh, his head. Uh. He was fucking babbling bollocks all down the phone. And I was like, Get fucked, mate. Like, I ain't got time for your bullshit. I don't want to hear your bullshit. Who the fuck do you think you are ringing me? Because up to this point, I've been going through this sort of thing for years yeah, with yeah. loads of people. Yeah, yeah. So this was like the end of it for me. This was like the, the final time that I was going to put up with this bullshit from anyone. Yep. So I was like, look, mate, like, I'm sorry, but I've, I've done my time of doing this. Go fuck yourself. You're not having anything off me, mate. Like, I was raging, Don. Yeah, like, yeah. fucking raging. Fucking hung the phone up, threw the phone on the fucking sofa or whatever I did. Killed himself the next week. Cool. Five on. days later. Wow. Didn't come to work on the Monday. And I just thought, you know what? Fuck off. I don't want I don't want to be a part of that yeah. shit. I don't want people like that. I've done that. I've been doing it for years and it's got me emotionally drained and yeah. stressed. And you know, I, I take problems home with me. But yeah, and it I'd go back, like regardless of what happened after that. But that evening, he overcrossed the line because you'd, ag you'd agreed on that in, when you spoke to him earlier in that day that you said you were getting paid the following week because yeah. that was the deal. That was what he signed up to. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Right. So you haven't done anything. Like that. You, he then asked you for a sub. You said no to that, and then he's crossed the line by constantly ringing you uh, when you've, you've got a child you're trying to put to bed. Yeah, it's your time at that point. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Um, you know, ground working time. It's not. Nah, it's not, it's you, not business hours. You, you, you'd done. You'd done. You'd explained to him where the process was. Yeah. And he had overstepped that point, and then yeah. and ruined that evening for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know your missus is annoyed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and fucking and you're annoyed. Yeah. yeah. And then that's your Friday night gone ruined. Done, yeah. isn't it? And yeah, yeah. And the weekend and, really. And these people don't really understand that they as don't well give because a fuck. because oh, you know I pay people weekly. His and, mentality was, "You owe me money." I've just worked for a week. That's yeah. basically what he's meant. What he was getting at. He's like, I've just done a week, and I'm like, yeah, but I don't get paid for that for another month. Yeah, this, yeah, and this is this is the like people think you're the boss. You have got loads of money. That's, Automatically, I, just think you're a bank. Yeah. Think you're rolling it. It's yeah. like, mate, do you know what? Do you understand what cash flow means? Do you understand that? No, they don't. No, because they don't know you've just had thirty grand's worth of direct debits come out that morning. Yeah, yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, or someone hasn't paid you for forty days or fifty days, yeah. or you know what? You yeah. Know, or however it works out. But yeah. I think people get so wrapped up in their own self and don't see the bigger picture here. Selfish. That, and so right. finding the right people, going back to the people again, finding the right people that understand. Mm. Now, most of my blokes are on monthly pay now because that's the only way. It works for you. Yeah, because you just can't get enough cash coming through yeah. like, on a weekly and well, yeah. two weekly basis to yeah. pay all this stuff, you know, and yeah. especially where stuff's gone like through the roof now. And then when you do other stuff where it's like bespoke we're now paying a lot of money up front to yeah. get stuff ordered and stuff yeah like yeah that. Like, and everyone wants payments on account now yeah and it's like fucking hell what have i got a credit account for yeah literally yeah yeah <laughs> so it's, it, you know it's a real i think and that's probably a post-covid thing with people go you know it feels Tightening like in their purse everyone's strings. just gone well i don't want to risk myself so everyone wants if you want this staircase front. you buy the staircase first before it turns you buy up. the materials yeah. before i work on it yeah yeah so it's a and that's a real difficult thing because then... In the where, of, where of people like us, like low-level developers and 
building company's got that cash flow. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I, my biggest downfall is I've never taken a deposit off anyone ever. See, I do. Uh, I, it's the worst thing ever because I'll be, I'll work for, and I paid everyone, and I'm like, oh god, I've got no money again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And Don't get nothing going, for another two weeks. <laughs> my missus like, you're a fucking idiot. I'm like, yeah, I know. Because like, I was just like, oh, Mister Nice, you know. I, I, and even people have offered it. And I go, ah, oh, be right. I'll just do the job and you just pay me at the end of it. That's nah, right. mate. And, uh, you know, I learned that pretty and, fast. And that's a, you know. Uh, Oh, I don't know. That's probably that's that's one of my biggest do pitfalls. Do, do, do you see what I mean? You know, start doing and that, it. And but that's where, like me employing the project managers help because I'll just go, just tell them we need thirty percent up front for this. Yeah. To, like to buy the material if they yeah, want yeah, to start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. need to, We've got to buy that. We've got to forward fund that. Yeah. yeah because that. you're um, you're all uh, for me. I'm always like almost so far behind. Do you see yeah. what I mean? You know. You never catch up. I never catch. You know, you're and, always in a deficit. And then you sort of finish that job and go, oh, I've got to pay for that job. No, fuck, no, where's my money? But I'm paying for that next job, aren't I? Oh, fuck. And then you cause, never yeah. earn any Cause you, money because you're always Because I'm never hole. stopping, am I? Because yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. doing the next one. Yeah. You're never so, reconciling, are you? You're no. always like paying that down, then you're already into another job, which is, means your accounts are still fucking sky high. Correct, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so you just, it's just big juggling. It's like a false economy. And, and, yeah. and again, this is something you don't get taught at like plumbing school or trade school 101. Like, how the hell? Mate, do you no one teaches you how to run a business. How, even... do, you, how do you balance these books? How, what, you were profit and like, oh, you know, I'm yeah. a, I did business as an A-level, I still didn't know enough. You just, That's I mean, what I'm saying. You know, so... Uh, and maybe there's a, there's a bit of a failing in the education system, Massively. if you see what I mean. Like, I think what, it's do, broken. Do we need to put a bit more of like real life stuff into it and like money like, management? Yeah, and just understanding what the world is rather than like. Uh, no, mate, hundred like, percent. Yeah, I don't know algebra or, or you, know, yeah. well, you know, and history is important. But you know, some stuff people, you know, yeah. I'm not saying this stuff isn't important because you need to have a good general knowledge is great for things. But yeah, on I, the other I, hand, and life skills are life skills. Do you, yeah. see what, you know, so and and you've got to think, you've got to think back to when the the curriculum was uh, designed. Uh, yeah. How long ago was that? Yeah. The 60s and the 50s? How fucking outdated is that? Yeah, yeah. And the way that we're teaching the kids nowadays in textbooks and things like that, yeah. it's fucking outdated. Yeah, yeah. Like, they could be... I feel that they could be teaching kids a lot more information quicker with different mediums, not just textbooks and writing on whiteboards and blackboards. They still do. Yeah, yeah, Why yeah. the fuck are they doing that? Yeah. And the shit that they teach people... But like I'd much rather my son or daughter to come home from school and tell me that they've learned how to turn a hundred pound into a thousand by creating a business and understanding what that looks like and how to do it rather than coming oh, I, I done I done RE this morning for two hours and learned about Sikhs yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not I'm no I know there might be some people out there that might listen to that and go oh yeah. you shouldn't have said that but I didn't mean it like that no no no, no I'm, and uh, yeah I think you get me yeah I get, I get what you're because saying. I feel that stuff can be learned in society I feel like that's a, a parent's a parent's job to be teaching their kids about how to treat people, yeah. how to be respectful of other people's beliefs and religions and choices and all this, that and the other. I think that falls at home with the parents. Yeah. I don't think that should be wasted in fucking school. But yeah. why have we got to learn about the Church of England in school? It's not relevant anymore. Hardly any kids are fucking Christian. Mine ain't, are yours? Yeah, well, well mine are. But are you yeah, religious? No, uh, no I'm not. But exactly. Yeah, no. Uh, it's, Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, no, I get what you're saying. And I think, uh, yeah. I think it's, the curriculum's fucked. It's, I think that it's so outdated in terms of that respect, if yeah. you see what I mean. And there needs to be more, like, real-life stuff. Like, like, the world is big and bad. When you come out of school, you don't know nothing about that. Nothing. Nothing at all. And, you know, uh, and people, I suppose, teenagers now are very exposed to the worlds of Instagram and all the rest of it, but then that's not the real world either, and people need to be assured that like, the celebrities that are earning millions of pounds of all this stuff, that is not real world. Like, there's no, not many 20-year-olds a... driving around in Lamborghinis. I no. tell you, in, in, in Bedford or Northampton, that, that just it isn't happening. Happen. Yeah, I've been so, to Bedford a few yeah, times. Yeah, so uh, uh, let, let's be realistic about stuff. Like, what's yeah. going to do... And, like, fundamentally, hard work is what's going to pay off it. Do you see what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But having a good understanding... Or working smart, at least. Yeah, no, it is. And just, just, just seeing, seeing where things lie and what could be that, but also experiencing lots of different things at yeah, school would yeah. be a better taster on stuff, if yeah. you see what I mean. You know, 100%. Um, but then, you know, um, we've taken our sort of first apprentice on as such, but he's my sort of stepson. Uh, and that's been a sort of delve into it because he'd say he's just been at college for two weeks, right? How and old he is he? 18? 18, right? But he gets home at two o'clock. I'm like, what have you done today? He's like, well, we did a bit and then the tutors can be bothered. And I'm like, mate, don't. Mate, like, I've, 
I like you've missed out on two great weeks of work here, right? Yeah. Like we've been second fixing a whole house. You could have been doing all this, and you'd have learnt like a million times more. What's he doing? Plumbing? No, he's carpentry here. Oh, okay. so he's going down the carpentry, but. Oh, God, I find it frustrating. Similar, because my little brother, uh, he's just joined me as an apprentice. Like, okay. He's been working with me on and off since he was uh, 15. He's now nearly 19. He's 19 in April. Um, but he started... I was the one who... Like, I said to him, when he left school, uh, he went and started... He was going to... He's like, I don't know what to do, what, electrics or plumbing. And I'm like, you're not the sort of guy that wants to be stuck indoors. I know you. I was like, can I do bricklaying? I was like, do brick laying, and then you can transfer that knowledge over to groundworks. You can go and do a bit of carpentry. Well, then you can try a bit of first fixing if you want to do yeah. other stuff. But go and do brick laying, because that's sort of like the carpentry and brick laying, like the fundamental, for me, trades. Yeah, yeah, Obviously, yeah. Obviously, electric and plumbing, yeah. are, are, are they're all basics, yeah. like needs. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But for me, brick laying and carpentry, you could, you could then transfer those skills to most other well, things. Yeah, I bet if you ask most general builders, for example, most of them are in a brick Where layer. Where would you start? Most of them are a brick layer or chippy. They're doing, I'd say, small to medium extensions yes. in this country. Yeah, that's, oh, exactly. Oh. And then they've got, they'll probably do a lot of their own first fix stuff and they'll they get someone else yeah. in to test it yeah, and do all they, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but they've worked out how to push a bit apart. You know, like, I'm, like, let's be honest, plumbing is not rocket science. It's I'm, fucking, a lot of it's push fit these this days. Is what I'm, this is what I mean. So it's not yeah. wrong. Understanding it is a bit more involved in that. Yes. But if you're doing hot and cold to a sink, it's pretty self explanatory like, you know, you know. You've got to be an idiot, not... Correct. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of idiots out there doing it as well. So. That's like I said to someone else earlier about the, do you think there's a problem with uh, that, I mean, that problem being um, contributed to by the low barrier entry level into construction? Yeah, so I think that is a problem. And I think people then not having the basic skills. Yeah. So like, and this is what I would say to all kids, like, Basic maths is imp- like imperative to everything. Every- Absolutely, and like I wish I was basic like, English and maths. Yeah. I mean science. I don't think so. Not so much. I mean, do you? Uh, no, I mean I, I quite enjoyed science. School, I, but, but that's a difference. But, but I'm saying, yeah. is it a fundamental? No, need? so but I think in terms of like adding up, like what we do in our job, yeah. like measuring, yeah, yeah quantifying, yeah, doing, subtracting, yeah. adding, division, yeah. times in, adding the VAT, all this stuff, right? It's all math. It's all math. And even if you don't know it, like brilliantly, there's lots of software that helps you all now, like quickly. Accounting some of it's software. Great, some of it's great, right? But you still got to have a rough idea to know where you've got to input that data. Yeah, or if that when the, if you typed in wrong, that you are somewhere near that number. So yeah, if you haven't yeah, got yeah. that basic, you know, like I don't know, ten times ten is a hundred, but you get a thing of a thousand. Yeah, you've been putted that wrong as well. Yeah, so yeah, you've got to a, having that basic a, knowledge is. Uh, Probably very crucial, but I wonder if they could do maths in a different way. And oh, this is going down the construction route, really. But like, you need X amount of bricks. Yeah. Like, learning how many bricks to are build in a square, this wall. or in a square meter. You know, like yeah, ten yeah. blocks does a meter square. You know, yeah. those sorts of things are quite good fundamentals for anybody because. Even if you're not going to go into construction, you might have a extension built on your house. That so you're going to pay for. And you could say to the brick lads, well, I know it's going to be roughly like a thousand blocks to do that. Or so, do you know, but yeah, you'd yeah. have a better understanding of all those things. Yeah, it, yeah. But you're learning maths. Rather than working in... out how many apples Johnny's going to have left if he gives one apple to Jane and fucking... Absolutely. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, I just wonder if you can do it in a in, in a twofold way. Really, yeah, yeah, you see yeah. What I mean? Sort you of know, teaching them about two things and not you just know, like, one. Could you talk about roof trusses and angles in you know in all totally, that sort of stuff? Yeah, because, geometry. Yeah, yeah because of like, like the best chippies, like the lads who do like the hand cut roofs with me, they are a wizard when it comes to angles. Yeah, you see what I mean? Getting but, their protractors out yeah, and no, work. Yeah, and, I'm shit at that. But yeah, but that is all you know, and, and that's a real skill, and that should be paid for well in this country. You know, yeah. so but that is a skill. But you've got to have the intelligence in the first the basic place to understand knowledge that. Yeah. of maths. Yeah. and numbers and to say I think there's only two real subjects out of school that you really need to have a basic of and it's English and maths yeah you know if you can't read and write it's not the end of the world you will scrape by but you'll struggle But and if you want to go big you're going to have to read contracts at some point in your life yeah or you're going to have to employ someone to fucking read them for you yeah. and you hope that they've got your best interest at heart that's the next thing isn't it you can pay everyone anything but it doesn't mean they doesn't mean they're, they're, they're doing it to your best you. 100% man and I've learned that as well yeah, unfortunately no, and, and so and these lessons are tough aren't they sometimes yeah and they, they hurt and they're costly as well yeah you know? and it dents your pride it dents your enthusiasm to go again but yeah you, you know you have to pick yourself up and get on with it that you? hurts but, me a lot more denting my pride than losing money though does yeah. it you? Oh God. God just like yeah. money, I could just be like, meh. Well, we can go down some more. It comes and goes. Yeah. But yeah. when it hurts me personally, I mean it, it, yeah. I'm a bit I'm not like a bear with a sore head when yeah, something no, hurts. Like, yeah, hurts and, pr- me. and like pride and all that. It's really, like when you get something wrong and you know you fucked, fucked up. up. Oh, yeah, and it's like mm. 
Like you... But <laughs> I think back on it now, you wouldn't. I wouldn't be where I was if I hadn't made those mistakes back then either. If you see what I mean, you know. So, and uh, like I say. People say failure breeds success, and I think that yeah, is part does. of it. If you see what I mean, because yeah, you, yeah. if you don't get knocked down or take the hard times, you don't enjoy. You the don't good know times. when the good are. No. I think. I mean, or your, or your. Yeah, I think. I think that makes you as a, as a businessman. I think if you're, if you're not cut out to deal with knockbacks, and you haven't got a very good resilient resilience threshold, I don't think you'll be a good businessman. Yeah, don't own your own business. Don't, don't, like, don't. And if Just, you're honest with yourself, and you can sit there and say. Yeah, I don't do well in pressure. I don't deal well with um, making decisions. I'm not decisive. Yeah. Don't fucking start a business. Yeah, don't. Because Honestly. it will just be a painful experience. Yeah, yeah. Because it's hard, isn't it? Like yeah, making... it's, re- re- it's really hard. And like you know, and as you grow and get bigger, these decisions and these decisions you make, they gr- are, uh, like they're massive. Yeah. Like you know, there's ten, twenty, thirty, fifty grand, hundred thousand pounds. You know, like. See, it's not always the the, the monetary value that really uh, makes me think. Whoa! I tell you what, does it for me? It's the fact that I'm responsible for like eight or nine other people's livelihoods. Well, so that like, that's probably like the thing that would keep me up most at night. Yeah. Like, well, how, fuck, how much like? Because those blokes like like this is uh, without them you're nothing. Yeah, no, because you can't go and do ten people's jobs at once. Absolutely, and then you can't turn over the money. Then you can't make the money. You fuck your clients you, off. Exactly that. But then. Uh, the other thing that I've always found amazing as a business owner, when you go for a mortgage, they want to know everything about you, like my yeah, inside leg yeah. measurement, all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Lad works for me for six months. Dom can have three pay slips. I've got a mortgage. Brilliant. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> How? <laughs> How? And this is the system we live in with PAYE. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah true. But then you go, right, that's this boat study. Like a couple of them got, like one of them got his first house last year. And I was like, please just punch for him because top lad, great bloke. Like, yeah. Really good for it. But then you go, fucking hell. <laughs> I'm paying this mortgage as well. Yeah. Like. And he's probably got kids. You know, it's just what I mean. So then you go, there's another little bit of pressure there. So, so but... almost you'll feel, because I was driving home thinking the other day and I was thinking, fucking hell, like, I've had some tough times financially and because, uh, you, you know, you, you don't go into, when you're going through a tough time, you don't go into the site or wherever your lads are and start kicking the bucket about going, fuck, I've lo- I'm losing everything because that's going to create issues okay. there. They're going right. to go fucking out the door and find a job elsewhere straight you away. Got, you got to front that out. Like you It's got, hard yeah. though, isn't it? Because I, I've had issues recently uh, over the past sort of year, you know, where we've had finance problems on yeah. the, on our developments yeah, 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 that yeah, we're yeah. building ourselves, yeah, yeah, yeah. our own developments. And obviously I've got a, um, a, a right-hand man, project manager, who I, I have to tell him to a certain extent what's going on. You have to, yeah, because he's he's you know he he wants to know he needs to know because he'd be ordering gear if you can't order gear because you're on stop. Or yeah, exactly, that. and that's what happens, right? Because he run me up a couple of weeks. He's like, boom, Juicens is on stop for <laughs> for 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 the development, and I was just like, that's because it was supposed to get paid last week and it hasn't been paid because the money hasn't come in yet. Correct, right? yeah. And and I was like, for fuck's sake! But he knew, and then the next day, I had one of my other lads phone me, going, oh. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, mate, but we still got work next week. And I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, oh, because uh, oh, so-and-so said that things were getting a bit tight. I was like, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> and then the same day, another guy asked me if I had to do work. Because, he's, because my right-hand man obviously felt a bit of pressure that day. Yeah. And he dropped a bollock. Yeah. And he was under the pressure from me. And he's probably having a little bit of a moment. And the yeah. lads are going, what's the matter? And he's opened his gob yeah. and told them a bit about what's going on. And they've yeah. gone, fuck, no work. It's not... Nothing even, nothing yeah, even but, like that. But Chinese whispers is the worst thing ever, isn't it? Like you know, <sighs> people just make a bit, but that isn't their problems to deal. That's your problems to That's deal what with. I and, said you're de- to him. and you're dealing with that by not letting them know. And it, mate, if there was an issue, and I really did think that, I mean, these guys have got families, kids, houses. If I really thought that of it was going to have an, an effect on them imminently, I'd, I'd tell them straight just, away. I'd just, say, lads, look, I'm really sorry, but works. Pff. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It ain't, it ain't that bad. No. It's just a financial situation where, you know, I've got work elsewhere and things coming in, but it's just like... Timing, isn't it? It's timing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And cash flow yeah, and course. fucking all this all shit. This, yeah. I said to the guys, I was like, look, unless I ring you, me, you come for... I pay your fucking wages. Unless I phone you and tell you there's no work tomorrow or next week, 
Don't fucking listen to anyone yeah. else. If you've got a problem, just phone me. Yeah. If it's looking a bit dire on site or you're not sure what you're doing next week, phone me and fucking ask me. But, but for all they know, you could have had another site. I did. So, <laughs> this, is what I mean. you know, this is what I said to them. I was like, listen, yeah. I was like, okay, I'll be honest with you guys because obviously they're phoning me. I said, look, I'll be honest with you. Yes, the finances on that particular site the lending, yeah. not my money, but yeah. the lending hasn't come, come through down. yet. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to put my own money into it because I've already done that for the past year and I'm not doing it yeah, again. Yeah, yeah. So don't worry because I've got a three-month job over here we can just jump straight onto. If that goes sideways, yeah. we can just jump here. No problem. You're, yeah. all, you're all back in work within a weekend. No yeah. problem for three yeah. months and then... No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? I said, that's why I didn't tell you anything was wrong. Because in my eyes, in your perspective, there's nothing wrong. And for your work, is nothing wrong. You're still going to get paid this week out yeah. of my bank, yeah. and you're still going to get paid next week if you're doing this job or that job. This is what, yeah. Yeah? And then I had a big dig at my man and said, yeah. listen, mate, like, shut the fuck up. Shut your mouth. If you want to go and have a word, you're stressed, go and shout into a pillow or something, not in front of fucking three of my lads that are going to be going, what's the matter, mate? Yeah, yeah. What's the matter, mate? Yeah. What's going yeah. on? Yeah, because they all want to know. Of course, you know they do. I mean? But they don't. They also don't understand. So this is the problem. So yeah. the lack of understanding causes. It's a lot all of they problems. think is shit. There's no money. That means he's going bankrupt. Fuck, yeah. fuck, fuck. But you know, like you, as, as a business, you've always got to adapt and think. You know, and yeah. you've got to be, you've got to manage be, people, you've, and you've got, to be, you've still got to be a bit nimble because these big. You can think you're on these big jobs, and that's probably where I've been at for the last say two. Oh, I've got these big jobs. I'll be oh, fine. I'm all right. I'll be fine. Yeah. No problem at all. But actually, you can't. But then, what happens if something on that job, like you said earlier, stops you from working? Exactly. And then you've got you know, six or yeah, seven blokes to worry we, about. And we've had jobs where we've had problems with tree issues. That people like you know planning, c- planning council, all this stuff. This happens. Put the yeah. brakes on. Yeah. So what do you do then? You've got six, seven, eight, ten blokes to find work for. Yeah. So always have a little bit. That's what I would say to a lot of people. Always have another little bit. Don't don't think you've won the lottery by because you just got one good job. Do you yeah. see what I mean? And just always have something that, like I said just then, I, I've had that job in the bag for a couple of months now. And the guy, he's an old school friend actually, and he keeps badgering me saying, can you start sooner? And I'm like, no, I can't. I'm so busy. Yeah. But I've done that because... I didn't know what was going to go on with this finance thing. So I, in my head, I'm like, right, I'm going to keep that there. Because I can start that money. He's paid me, me a too. deposit already. Yeah, yeah, he's paid, right. So I don't care. He, yeah, yeah. He's gave me five grand yeah, yeah. two months ago. Yeah, yeah. So I know that that job's mine. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's a serious yeah. guy. Yeah. So I know that job's mine. Yeah. So I know that if push comes to shove, I could ring him tomorrow and say, mate, I need to start that job Monday. He'd be like, yeah, sweet, happy days. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But even at the moment, I've told him now, sorry, mate, because I've got this stuff going, I'm not going to be there till June. Yeah. But he's all right with that because yeah. that was already, that was pre-agreed. That was, yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, so it's always good to have that fun. And like, because... Because of what I did when I first started, I've still got what I class as my legacy customers that I'll yeah, still yeah, go because yeah. they they never they've never messed me around. So yeah. when I've put an invoice, they've always paid it. Yeah, like and they never really question what I do or what I charge for. I don't take the mick either, you know. But they've they've always been good to me because they've been with me now for like fourteen, fifteen years. Yeah, on you my know job. Them. They've they've got maybe a couple of properties. They've always been good, you know. They, when they've got their kitchen or their bathroom, they've always rung me to do it. So we've always done it for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but they're always there, and it, it's weird how it always works out. If things aren't going to what they always seem to phone you and go. Tom, I could do with that bathroom, dude. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. No that problem. I'll be there. Yeah, yeah. two weeks time, perfect. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, I think, it's always just remember where you come from, and you know, you ne- like I don't do a lot of stuff on the tools now, even though I do like I it. Don't I, I like it some days. I do quite like Same. it. You know, like some days, if I could not answer the phone and not do the emails and not do all the other stuff, I'll just some, get on site for a day. Get, just do it. It's lovely. You know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Oh, I love driving the dumper. Oh, I fucking oh, love I it. Do. Just get because you can for just, a day. Yeah, no, yeah. Just, only, the sun's out. Only for a day in the sun. Only, <laughs> yeah. day, only, in, the, only in the sunshine. Probably, <laughs> yeah, <now>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time of year, Christ. No, fuck um, no. But you know, actually, sometimes that's quite a nice, uh, like, refresher. Or, like, yeah, it is. Yeah, no, it is. So that's that's good. But when you're like not on the tools as much, yeah. you sort of. Uh, you, I miss it, mate. Yeah, no, I do. I miss the banter. You know, I really do. Like we and, talk, and you don't. I think as a boss, you don't enjoy the banter as much anyway, because you're always worried about this and that, yeah. and like the progress. And oh, like, yeah, always. Like, I always get, oh, you've changed. Yeah, you've I, changed. And I don't know why I do, but I always turn up to site at like five past ten, and of course nobody's working because yeah. they're, they're like in the van it's or break in the time, yeah. Mate. I'm like fucking. There's winding me up. This is every this, time I turn up, they're doing nothing. There's ten blokes here. They're doing nothing. I was like, yeah. it's ten o'clock. I'm just chill out. Just yeah, you don't stop a sandwich, mate. For fuck's sake, just chill out. But you know, all these little things are like, yeah. You're always expecting them to be moving uh, and doing bits. You know, and then, uh, you know, someone said to me, he's like, if you've got a good bloke and he and he would do 75% of what you would do, 
that's all right because no one's going to have the same care in the field for your business for me like I have like no yeah. one cares as much no one's going to work as hard as you for not. you no exactly yeah. so you know so if you get 75 80 percent out of a good that's lad good. that's good do you see what I mean you know yeah. and as long as they're doing 60 it's all right if it, yeah, if it goes below anything that, below you, that yeah you got to start uh, yeah you got to look elsewhere sort of thing but yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's I think it's a very interesting like development of yourself if you see what I mean as yeah. you grow if you see what I mean and yeah, how, definitely. you know and how you transition from that yeah you know from the bloke who used to change ball valves and taps and do bathrooms yeah, to now yeah, a bloke yeah. sitting there going Christ where are we going to find two million quid from? Do mate, you know I'm I mean? the you know? same, mate. I was I was a snotty fucking scallywag from a council estate who wanted to be the next fucking Biggie Smalls, white version. <laughs> um, but you know, now I'm sort of where I am, and I'm I'm, I'm talking about millions of pound like the fucking Skittles. Yeah, like yes, yeah. and, and this is something I think people. This is probably the downside to some of this stuff, like you know. Yeah. Everything's a hundred, you know, minimum a hundred thousand pound profit on yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a like, you know, we've got developments of like fifteen million pounds. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It is just like the reality is a bit different to that, in it? Massively. Uh, you know, so uh, and that's where. Uh, Listen, don't get me wrong, right? Because this time last year, it was true for me to say that we had a pipeline, pipeline, yeah, pipeline. Yeah, I'll just say that again, pipeline of deals worth twenty five million pound. Correct. Yeah. Right. This was this time February last year. And obviously, in that twelve months, thirteen months, we've now got a pipeline that's worth about seven million. Yeah, because those deal. One of the deals, GDV, was nearly eight million. Yeah, that's fallen out of bed. Yeah, and one of the other ones fallen out of bed as well. Yeah, and the world has changed a lot in the last twelve Massive. months. Massive. Yeah, hugely. So look at where we are. Interest rates. You yeah. know, cost of materials, cost Rent. of bill, cost. Yeah, every, every, you know, everything. Yeah. You know, like, so. The, things, the margins are going to go somewhere, aren't they? They've got to go somewhere. And, like, yeah, everyone wants to be a property developer. Everyone wants to be a multimillionaire. But yeah, but why? <laughs> is, it, is it because it is portrayed in such a way by the education companies and the trainers, the mentors that are out there now that are making it look easy when it's actually not? Yeah, so this is so this is my... and uh, This is my big thing. Because Listen, we met, I met you on... Yeah. On you came on to uh, just to throw it on, into context of people. I was running a mastermind session with my old mentor at my first property networking event that I started in October yeah. last year, and you booked one of the yeah, tickets yeah. to come to the yeah, event. Did, yeah, yeah. So that's how we yeah, so we met. met that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and well, you know, and and so uh, Andrew Hubbard, your mentor. Yeah. Like, what a great like tradesman has done like. Done well for himself. Done really well. But, but timing is everything, Robbie. Isn't 100%. it? Right? Timing is everything. Yeah. And then. And like this is fair play to Andrew Hubbard and like the lads I do some stuff with do a lot with like the white box boys. Yeah. Um and they've done amazingly successfully. Mm. But they, they but also they they they're in a position now where they can charge good money for like the education side of it. Yeah. yeah? So they get fifty people in a room at a weekend. Paying twelve hundred pounds each. Yeah, or a couple of grand you know, that's a big lump of cash that is. So they right? can just go and chuck into other things. And it just helps, doesn't it, if you see what I mean. So yeah, if me and you could get a hundred grand for a weekend Man, that's just for a weekend. It'd make life a lot easier, wouldn't right, it? Right, that's just it? for the weekend, right? And then on the back of that weekend, they've had 60 or 70 people paying £1,200 to be there in the room for the three days. They then take on about 10 or 15 people paying £25,000 for a year. For a month, yeah. And, and like I say, I, you know, I'm on a personal development thing. I've, paid, I've probably spent... I have. I've spent 20 grand in the last 12 months. And yeah, I'm a better, easy. I'm a better person for it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it also... It also can make your developments look a lot easier if you're not having to find that. You know, when it, something goes wrong for a hundred grand, well, got, I'm doing that this weekend. That's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. so you can paper over the cracks in so, like, I, I just want to be real with people. Yeah, I, same like, here, mate. Because I'm seeing developments from a real side of things. Same. Like, you know, and I'm in it. Yeah, <laughs> and and there is money to be made, but God, you've got to be good and you've got to get the deal right. And, like, and you've got to what, be careful. What land has been bought for? And like now with the planning conditions and the restrictions and now with new stuff coming in with biodiversity and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. this is going to have an impact. It's going to get profit. harder and it's harder. Get, and because resales are now dropping, so we're not getting as much on the out where we were 12, 18 months ago and houses were selling like that, you know. Quick. People are saying conveyancing now is taking Six five months. months. Yeah, that's Six cool. months. Well, six, that's six months of finance. Yeah, you're because paying they, interest on them six they can't, months. They can't start really. They can't really deal with the conveyancing until you've got the sign off from building control. So you've exactly. got to build the bloody house. You've got to finish, finish it, it. Get it all signed all off. All money in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and then rates at ten, fifteen percent. It's. And all of a sudden, over your, you know, when you should have been probably completing and selling in eight weeks, it's taking six months. You're paying 
eight, seven, ten percent interest on the money you've borrowed every month. And at that point, you're at one and a half million. You've borrowed, you've borrowed four hundred grand for a build, and you're paying eight percent a month on that interest. Uh, you know, and you thought you were going to make a couple of hundred grand, then all of a sudden that eight percent is eating your two hundred grand at a rate of knots, isn't it? And you then know? you've realised, oh shit, I, oh yeah, we had to get that. Oh yeah, we had to get solicitors out for that. Oh, there was extra. Oh shit. Oh no, my fucking solicitors bill is fifty grand. Yeah. Oh my god. And that's what we realised on our last development. We looked at the figures at the end and we were like, fucking hell. The interest alone, like I said to you outside yeah, earlier, yeah, yeah. the interest alone and the solicitor's fee. So that's just the legal fees and the interest on the money we borrowed over 70 grand. Yep. That should be in our pockets, man. All right, fair enough. We pay for solicitors. You know, you, you, you're expecting to pay five figures for them, you know, five grand, 10 grand maybe. Yep. Not 50. No. Not 50. And. 50 yeah. <laughs> for one bill it, may I just say that was for one bungalow that wasn't for a fucking scheme of that's 30 yeah. and uh, and so that's where if you have got a few multiples it helps doesn't it because 50 yeah, yeah, between 5 to 10 yeah. grand so it's okay but yeah, 50 yeah, yeah. with one that's, it's, that's a sickening amount yeah it is uh, but when you when you uh, evaluated that site two or three years before and you thought you were going to make loads of fucking money out of it didn't you yeah we did mate on paper we should have made fucking 300 grand did we no. No. Do you know what I mean? We ended up taking... Uh, hang on, let me just think. Between me and my business yeah. partner, Ian, uh, we took 38 each. Yeah. 38 grand. Yeah. So what? But how long did that take you to do? Well, the build, not long. The build. Fucking... But, how long, but how long from when you bought the site to when you finished the site? What, to sell, you mean? Yeah, yeah. To complete? Yeah. 18 months. Yeah. So, but 38 grand over 18 months. I could earn that in a month. Yeah, this is what I mean. <laughs> Do you know? Or I could, I could have a much less stressful job. Less stressful. Go and work as a, as a, as a PM for someone, yeah. earn double that money in a year and get a company car. Yeah. And my fuel paid. Yeah. yeah. And, and my lunch paid. Because I imagine the last two months you're on the phone to solicitors every two, three What's days. What's going on? Like, we're, we're like, let's get this done. Where's, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, we fucked up. The land registry was done in the yeah. wrong title, the wrong name on the split. Sorry, we've got to actually go back to the, but go back and get that done again. Oh, 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 sorry. So you've made a mistake, but we've still got to pay your bill 100% and you're going to delay our time scale and you're going to cost me money. This is it. But that's all right, yeah? yeah? Oh, sorry. Well, uh, but that is okay to them. And, and this is... I what think... other industry could you do that no, in, no, no, Dom? No, no, Because if, if you did it, you'd, you wouldn't have a job and no-one would pay you to do it. Exactly. And all my lads would leave. Yeah, that's what, yeah. So, uh, it's weird, isn't it? It's, it is. It's, it's, it's a weird... Um, I think people don't realise what <laughs> we're... It's a gamble, isn't it? Like, even, it but even if you're working for somebody... So even as a con... You put a price in, you do that. You're still... like. I'm always on a... Like, like, my lads are on a lot of day rates or they're on a salary or the rest of same, it, right? Same, But I'm always on a price. you same. Right? And I'm going... Fucking fuck hell. It. Like, I thought you were going to take two days, not four days to do that. Yeah. Why do you take two days? Well, I finish at two o'clock most days because when you're not here, my back turned I'm in the van. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Fantastic. You know, yeah. but that doesn't stack though, does Mr. it? Mr. Nice Guy again. Yeah, no, but all these things have got... Could we have stayed half an hour extra? Shit this? rolls down here. Yeah, no, it? but... All these hours add up, don't they? Yeah, if, you you've, got, if you've got ten blokes leaving an hour early every day... You're losing a day of work. Fucking hell, that's yeah. a day you're losing every day, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And it, uh, I think it's just these sort of like hard lessons to learn, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, oh, they are you know, hard. Uh, you know, and, uh, They're realisations you've got to have, isn't it? They're realisations, and I think... You've got is... to lose and do things wrong and then yeah. realise, like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and some people can be very successful if you are very focused on it and you get the deals right and all the rest of it you can do yeah, well. You yeah, know, and yeah. I, so I think the thing I struggle with, and I noticed that like, you boys have got with the like uh, the Goldbrook home stuff, like you've got a good team. Yeah. yeah? yeah and yeah. like you're sharing that burden as well a little oh, bit. Oh, mate. You see what I mean? if, so, honestly, if I was doing it on my own, Dom, I'd have topped and, myself. And this is the thing, that's probably one of my big like business regrets that I don't have like a business partner that's in. Like, so my missus, she is great, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like in with you, like you need you know, someone in with complementary skill set who isn't going to be arguing with you, but, but working with skin in the game. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. They're invested. Their ass is on the line when it. You know, like we win together, we lose together. Yeah, Do you see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. Because yeah. uh, like that's the bit I find at the moment. I find that like, and that's something. That's your, that's your barrier at the moment. A, a little bit because I feel like you can only take on so much as an individual you because can. you'll you'll crack at some point yeah, because 100%. you can only take an, an amount if you yeah, see what 100%. I mean. Percent. And and it's all good people saying, oh, well, leverage it out which is fine but it's still a service you've got to pay for 
probably up front yeah, if you're leveraging something cool. out. Yeah, yeah. And you're still just paying someone to do a job. But and also like you can leverage certain things out, but you want someone else's opinion on that because yeah. you know, constructively. All, yeah, and we've all been in places where you come out and go, Oh, that bloke's brilliant. Yeah. You don't know if he's brilliant or not. You've just met him for twenty minutes, he sold you the fucking dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've yeah. got I've got to pay him five grand. He yeah. doesn't do the job. Like I think like marketers are the best for this, aren't they? They come in and say like, oh, I'll do, I'll do your uh, advertising for you. Fantastic. All you've got to do is sign on the dotted line, pay me five grand. I'm going to get you all this work, all the rest of it. Mm. Boof, nothing. Yeah, do you yeah, see what I mean? Because yeah. everyone can see the dream, but they can't actually materialise yeah. like, these things. So it's very hard to sometimes quantify those decisions by yourself when these decisions are big. We're yeah, talking, yeah. We're, not, we're not messing around at like 500 quid anymore. Do you yeah, see what yeah, I mean? You know, yeah, like yeah, definitely. These decisions are real, aren't they? You know, £50,000 yeah. for a solicitor. Hey. Maybe, maybe we need to find another solicitor next time. Yeah, you know, exactly. But, yeah, exactly. But, you, but again, if you don't do it, you don't know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And are they going to tell you that on that property course? No, nah, of course, nah, course they're not, mate. They're going to say, put five, they they're did, going to put five grand in for this. Yeah, uh, hope for the best. My last one only cost me four, so just allow yourself five, you yeah. should be fine. And that's what, yeah, but let's be honest, Dom, right? If you were sat in that room, or if I was sat in that room, well, I don't know, I, I, and we've already spoke about our appetite for risk, so maybe we would have probably just gone ahead and done it anyway, but for most people, I'm talking generally, if they were in the room, and whoever was at the stage going, oh, it's not easy. I'll tell you what, yeah. there's money to be made, but I'll tell you what, prepare for sleepless nights, yeah. divorces, oh, marriage breaking down, your kids leaving home and hating you because you can't be at home. Uh, imagine it. Could yeah. you imagine people uh, selling the truth? But, but you go back to that and you, and you, you did that for 38 grand. Fucking hell, give me strength. Do you not? Like, yeah. Like, that's the reality of it, though. If, the, if if things don't go... like, And you still made money on that. Oh, we still made, yeah. We we, we paid back a, an investor from a from a different thing, 100 grand out of that yeah, profit. Yeah, yeah. So technically, all right, yeah, we only took 38 each yeah, yeah, cash, yeah. but we actually paid back a 100 grand investor as well. Yeah, yeah, no, but... So, so we technically uh, no, earned so 170 yeah. Six. Yeah, but you didn't have the money. So you had to use it. You had to get, you had yeah. to get the hundred grand off Mabel in the first place. <laughs> yeah, you know, to, so, to pay St. girls. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we're not in that position where we've got pots of cash. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and people say like, oh, you can get into it. Use OPM. They all call it other people's money. And I just think that, like... But that's all changing. People want skin in the game. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, why is your dad not investing in that? Yeah, exactly. Do you see what I mean? Why is your, why is your family not investing in that? Because yeah. why, should, why should I believe in you're going to make money and not? Yeah, and and yeah. I'd flip it on the other side. Me and you are builders, Robbie, right? So yeah. we can do something. Yeah. If that person is, I don't know, like, works in an office, is, oh, I don't know. Totally job, not in... Yeah, which is what they sell as well. You can be anything, right? Yeah, they do. Quit your job. <laughs> but you can't then, when the shit hits the fan, you can't, like, we could do that in cost. Yeah. Yeah, and go like, I'll go and work there on a Saturday and get this done. Yeah, I'll push that, this along. That needs to happen. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we get this done. Yeah. They can't do that because they can't do it. They haven't got the skills. They've got to pay someone. And now wages at 250, 300, 400 pounds. Yeah, a day. no matter what, they've what? always got to outsource that. Exactly that. So, oh. I would just take all that stuff with a pinch of salt, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. I really would. Yeah, because, I, I, I do. You know, people can sell anyone the dream, if you see what I mean. And, but remember, that is a business as well for them. That's a model. Yep. That's what they're selling. They're selling a product, which is their mentoring, their training. And don't get me wrong, both those two companies, like Andy and what, they've both done it themselves. Don't get me wrong. They have built the houses. They've sold the houses. They've made money out of it. Do yeah, not yeah, get yeah. me wrong. There is there is a blueprint for this stuff. Yeah, Do it not works. get me wrong. It does, but, but it changes. The blueprint's there, but it the doesn't the necessarily... Um, I don't think it's relative to everyone in everyone's geographical locations, their, their financial situations. No. That blueprint does not work for everyone doesn't work and then also you might have to tweak it and and timing is everything yeah, like, yeah. so if we're in a shit state in a minute if you finished your site 12 months ago and sold it then and completed then you're all right yeah but if you're finishing now like, like a bit where sort of we are values are coming down costs have all gone up yeah it, these things don't marry up so well if yeah. you see what i mean yeah. so and that's the reality of it all do you see what i mean Mate, so yeah would you borrow two million quid to make fuck all probably don't do it yeah or would you borrow two million quid to only make 100 grand in two years no no why, why why would you? No, you just got... work a bit harder. Like, and go and work a bit harder. What you're doing now, and you'll be all right without yeah, the stress and the hassle yeah. of it all. You yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And if your passion is property, just bide your time and find where it, when it's right for you to do yeah. it. If you see what I mean, you know. Well, I think for me, I mean, land development, especially, it, it all boils back to 
purchasing right. Yeah, definitely. Def- getting the deal done right. As long as you're purchasing that land right, you're putting the right offer in, and you're getting that accepted. Fine, you'll be fine. You'll, or you'll, yeah. you, you're, 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 okay. That's you and, won't be fine, but you're setting yourself up correctly. Yeah. Right at the start, if you're buying low and you're getting a good deal on the land, the chances of you being a successful developer on that plot are higher than yeah. someone who's gone and, in at market value and paid two hundred grand for it. Absolutely. Do you know and, what I mean? And I think also. We've been in an exceptional like two or three years economically where yeah, we've it's seen been mad. where we see material costs go up 20, 30, 40 percent on stuff. Yeah. Fucking more than that it's on steel. That's you know, so you all know and then you've gone that oh cross, that's a lot. How am I gonna do this? And then so those developments have changed so much over that three year period, if yeah, you see what yeah, I mean. Yeah. So now I feel like we are a bit more of a steadier in terms of material costs. We yeah, know where they are, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that has seen build costs go from the 140s, 150s, 160s, 200. to 200s. Yeah, and it's staying there. It's staying, yeah. yeah. Well, it ain't going to come down, is it? I, I, I can't see. I mean, the only thing I can see is the big, big boys, put, they slow right down. So, the, the, you know... They already sort of... But And then the market comes back in, so bricklayers maybe aren't earning £400 a day. They're on the, 200 again. Yeah. <laughs> that's got to happen. They've, that's well, been going fucking do, 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 do for ages I, I now, think it's it? sort of... It needs to happen for reality, but then I also get the cost of living still. Yeah, fucking and then up when here. you get snow, rain, and like you know, you're off for how, two months. How a does year. that bricklayer pay for his mortgage? Do you know when he's not working for things? So you've got to earn a bit of money in the good times as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. there is There's... swings and roundabouts to these things. Oh, so, yeah, and you've yeah. got every story's got two sides, doesn't it? So yeah. you know, <laughs> and, ev- and everyone's and, you know. Don't get me wrong. The good boys, they deserve to earn the money because they're good at what they do. And yeah, do you, yeah, know yeah. I mean? you know, but there's also a lot of crap out there as well. Too much, and I so. think the crap that's out there makes it harder for the for the for the good boys. For the good guys, yeah. And I, I think being a being a contractor is difficult enough as it is now anyway with people's attitude towards people's attitude, especially domestic clients more so for me. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about what your views are on that, but, you know, I, I find domestic clients a lot harder to work for than commercial clients. Yeah, I, the, the expectation is right up there. Like, yeah, you're like, working in their house. We don't want any dust. Well, that yeah. is not going to be possible Yeah, today. it's like, look, I'm really sorry, but I'm cutting a hole in your wall, right? There's going to be dust. Do you know what I mean? I can literally plaster your house in plastic sheeting. But it's going to be dust. It's going to be dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't, doesn't matter what I do at this point, there'll yeah. still be dust. You know, so... Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Whereas if you're working for a developer and it's an empty house and they're going, oh, boss, it's all yours, mate. It's, a, di- it's a different animal. Oh, like, hey, fucking yeah. happy days, because they're not, yeah. like, behind you looking down, you know, looking at your footprints on the floor and going, what the fuck, it's my house, but it's a different ball game, it's isn't a diff- it? It's a, it's a completely different animal. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, I think as a business owner, this is this management of expectation, mm. whether it be for your lads or for your customers and your clients. Yeah. Like, you know, communication and all it, like, it just helps, doesn't it? Yeah, you yeah, see yeah, what definitely. I mean? Like, unfortunately, we are going to make some mess here because we are doing a big thing. But as you long know, as you're telling them and what, you're giving them the measures, like, don't worry. We're going to try and shit up. It's going to be messy, but at the end of the day, we'll clean it all up. Bosh, clean up. You know, yeah. and if you're not happy, just tell me, and, and we can sort it out. Yeah, don't just yeah. Our communication's yeah, massive it is. Uh, in yeah. every in in every way. And, it? and I think it's very easy, and I've been guilty of it in the past. You sort of bury when things are not going well. You just bury, bury your head bury in the head. sand. Yeah. You, you got uh, unfortunately sometimes you have got to stand up and go. Pff. Try and pretend it's not happening. Yeah, this, this is real, and we've just got to deal with this situation now. So. Yeah, it's not yeah. easy to do that to stand up and admit when you like you said earlier about admitting faults in yeah, yourself no, and yeah, what you've no, done. It's no, hard to be no, like that. But <laughs> You have to look in the mirror sometimes, oh, don't mate, you? you know, yeah. And go, I've messed this up. It's your fault. Oh, yeah, there's, there's no <laughs> other clown here. You know, yeah. I thought the best in fit. You know, uh, and I, you know, I'll always keep trying because that's the sort of person I am. But you yeah. know, some of the things I tried, I tried to set a scaffolding company up two years ago. Did you? Didn't work. No. Why? We had different ideas. I'm not ah, a scaffold. Okay. I've yeah, got a scaffold. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just different. We're, we're different. We're poles apart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your ideas on probably yeah. business was different. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. When you're all in, you should be all in to me. Just see what I mean. You yeah, know, not, like, not toe dipping when you feel yeah, like yeah. it. Yeah, no, that's... Yeah, I could say quite a lot about that. I've been in business with people that felt like they could do that and they only wanted to do certain things that they felt they could do and they were stronger at. And I'm like, look, man, like, it's not all about that. You need to tr- try a bit harder. Yeah. Do a bit more. Yeah, and like I like is what we're doing making money right now. Like what and why yeah. isn't it making money? Like yeah. we gotta be we've got to be honest, we've got to be frank, you know, and like we probably let that drag a little bit too long, you know, yeah, and it yeah, cost yeah. me even more money. But yeah. Yeah, then I go back from it and go, Well, yeah, but I wanna go again on something else. I need something else to go at. Do you yeah. see what I mean? Because 
Uh, you've definitely got that resilience you need as a businessman. You, I think you, you've just, got to have it. You got, but and I'd also say there's an element of self belief as well. God, because, mate, because, always got to have it. Because if I don't believe in me, Who who's going gonna, gonna gonna to believe in me? Your so lads ain't. This is what I mean. Your so, clients ain't. No. For a start, the you know, people you're trying to pitch to ain't. No. They'll smell it on you. Yeah, no. Do you know what I mean? Don't like, know what you, you don't know what you do. And, uh, you know, when I started all this building work, like... Pff, I went through a period of not winning many, um, converting many quotes, because I, for, like, a six-month period at the start of last year, my heart went in it. I was totally thinking about developments. I weren't thinking about my clients, my customers, potential or yeah. existing. Uh, and I was going to quote jobs. I was being really, not rude to people, but I was being quite like... I'm all right. I've got 25 million pound pipeline, don't I? I don't, 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 do don't, yeah. I don't want this fucking job. Yeah. You'll get my price. You like it or lump it. Yeah, yeah. And I was a bit like that. And I didn't... I won a couple of jobs. Not many. Not as, no, nor, yeah, as I normally would. Yeah, right, but yeah. now I'm looking back, I'm thinking, yeah, that was the problem there. That was me being like that. Do you know what I mean? It, and then you go back and go, well, I only made 38 grand at the, at the development at the time. <laughs> Should have tried a bit of those quotes. You know, <laughs> yeah. but, but if yeah, you don't yeah, go yeah. through it and look back and go, well, maybe I did get that wrong. Do you see yeah. what I mean? And like, I think we're now at a point in the construction industry at this present time where we do need to think a bit harder about it, if you see what I mean, and go, yeah, yeah. what is the bread and butter here, if yeah, you see what yeah. I mean? Because developments can be great and they can be very lucrative, yeah. but they can also be not They, can, they well. can suck you dry. That's exactly. the thing. While still being lucrative on the back end, yeah. they can suck you dry up front. Yeah. So they can cripple you. It can still be a great deal, yeah, yeah, but if you're, if you're funding it with your own money and then your money's not getting re um, replenished elsewhere then you're fucking yourself. And that's what yeah. I did at the start. Yeah, no, and, and that becomes very tough, doesn't it? Yeah. You see what I mean? Because then mentally you're not in the right state to run... What, Free on a, businesses. But on a job that's doing you very well as well. Yes. So you might, be going, you might go back to your sort of groundwork and stuff and go, well, I could be making fucking real good dough there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But me... I'm, I I'm thinking I, about that over I can't there. even do it because yeah, 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 yeah. I've cooked myself on this other stuff that ain't even making me any money yeah, yeah. currently. If yeah, you see yeah, what yeah. I mean. You know? yeah, I do, but, mate. Yeah. But it's, it's very hard not to spread yourself too thin, when you, especially when you've got... Like aspirations and want to do well because spreading yourself too thin can be very detrimental as well. What's made it easier for me to spread myself a bit thinner than the average person would be able to is partners. Uh, and, the, and this is what like I said. I said it's to Dean at the, the event, yeah, yeah. and I, like he to me was just that guy who was He's just hot, mate. on it, you know, like lists, spreadsheets. Yeah, oh, that's He's, him. That, that's but, it. I need that. You need, but I need that. Just, I'm that, shit at that. Yeah, this is what because I like it. But you're the do. You like to see it all, don't you? Yeah. You go, that's real. That. Is yeah, that, yeah. I want to see that number. At the I'll input. Like, yeah. I'll sit there and go, oh, fucking yeah. We'll put that. Uh, that looks great. And I work to that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But actually creating it yeah. and, and putting all that in place, like no, sitting no, there no. doing all the formulas on Excel. Oh, <laughs> mate. <laughs> nah. But hey, Dean loves it. He gets yeah. a fucking hard on yeah, over yeah, it. And yeah. I'm like, fucking hell, you crack on, mate. Do you but know then what I mean? that's what you all need because no one can be good at everything and we all got to be different as well, are we? So, you know, it's... Uh... Oh, mate, it's I, interesting, you know, and I, and like I say, I took, yeah, you know, I think you gave us your little like brochure thing, and I, you know, I said to my missus, this is what we got, like, this is so good, this is really, like, that's what you want. It's so impressive what you boys have done, you know, and like, yeah, 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 thank you. And it, and it might not happen tomorrow, it might not happen overnight, but like, might, it might take a year or two, three, whatever. That's what I mean, but you boys will be successful, I have no doubt in my mind. Oh, I know about we will that. as you know, well, you know, and these deals might not be great now, but you'll, that's you, fine, but you'll, you'll filter through, we'll yeah, learn from these wrong ones, absolutely, and you know then you'll I mean? come out the other side because. The fundamental is we still have we've got a shortage of homes in this, and that's always going to be there so, for a what, considerable future. Considerable right? time because no one's hitting targets, are yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, that's a fact. What we need to see is government be a bit more like, fairer on like planning, planning timing, yeah. yeah, all this other stuff, and like putting the boundaries a bit wider. Yeah, and um, I don't know. Maybe I'm generalising here, but big house builders can build on fields whenever they feel like. It's yeah, like, green belt's not a problem. They no look problem. for it. Yeah, uh, you know, we look at some brownfield sites and we, the hurdles we had to go over there is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, like, yeah, come yeah. on. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is just an abandoned wreck. Do you yeah. see what I mean? And you're, you're still, like, killing money, it. Money yeah. talks, though, yeah, of course it? it does. Of course That's it does. the issue. And, we're like, we've got... This has been, like, a common theme throughout this interview. And, you like, you've said it, I've said it. And if you haven't... And you're getting into development or whatever, and you haven't got that bucket of your own money available... You're going to be using someone else's and paying through the fucking nose for it. Yeah. And, and that, that is what these big boys ain't doing, are they? No. They're not using other people's money. No, no, They're using no, their own they fucking money. Matter, They're land banking these these bits of land 10, 15, maybe even 20 years ago. Because when it was good for them, it when was it, so good. Yeah, exactly. So they just fucking bought all this land. Like Persimmon are probably, and, and, and Bovis and, and Bloor are probably building houses on land that they bought in the 80s. Yeah, yeah potentially. I don't, yeah, I don't know probably, how it all worked, but yeah. yeah but, mate, I guarantee they fucking are, because I know that they buy they buy land way, way in advance of the, the development boundary even being near it, and then they'll wait 
five, 10, 15, 20, 25 years until that boundary's moved so far that, oh, oh, hello, that site's in that boundary. Yeah, 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 100 yeah. houses, yeah. cheers, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's just... That's oh. what they do. Yeah, it's, it's, and that development is completely different to the developments me and you do, isn't it? Oh, Massively, it's just, mate. Oh. Because they bought the land 25 years ago for a fucking peanuts. Yeah. And, like, it, their, their bill costs are, like, Fucking yeah, well, that's, that, 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 phenomenally low compared that's, to what ours are. But it's like it a different, it's a different world. Like, and yeah. you know, I've had a big thing in the last say three or four months. As you get bigger and you can buy a bit more when you're building like five, six houses, if you can speak to the right people in these builders merchants, there's a big difference in price on certain things. Oh yeah. Like contract rates for yeah. the big boys are completely different to what, and you think you spend decent dough, like 20, 30, 10, 40, 50, 20 grand a month. That's just what I mean. And that's so you, big money. You think you're spending decent money, right? But, they're, but really, they're getting fucking millions of pounds a but month. They're, but they're making like a penny out of something. Like they'll yeah. just do like lorries of lorries of blocks for like a couple of quid because the bigger picture is just like millions and millions of pounds out yeah, of Yeah, it's cash flow, it's, yeah, it's revenue, all, isn't it? Yeah, so. But Whereas you, with us, they earn money on us. They, um, we're, we're their bread and butter. Yeah, they're on a 30%, aren't they? So. Yeah, exactly. But you, we, you need to speak to the right people, and that's what I'd say. Try and, uh, for any small builders out there or plumbers, try and speak to the right people in the right branch. Yeah, don't just and, ask the guy behind the desk. Get, the, get your terms set, especially if you're doing a project for like six, 12 months as well, yeah, if yeah, you see yeah. what I mean. Know where you're going to be at because yeah. if things start creeping, yeah. that's your margin. Fuck. They're eroding, if you yeah, see what yeah. I mean. Yeah, definitely. And right. if they won't do it, go to someone else because someone else will, will want do your, it. They will want your business. Yeah, 100%. It's competitive out there. Look how many different merchants there are out there. Oh, there's well, several. I yes. don't just, I don't just, I mean, as a rule, if I'm going to get something from Juicens, I'll always go, hang on a minute, let's go and price that at Trav around the corner. Do you know what I mean? Or Hughes Grey around the no, corner. No, see, yeah. you got to. Yeah. If you're not doing that, you're because, a fucking idiot. Because someone will want your work. Yeah, and it will be different, priced differently in every single place you go to, whether it's by a penny or a pound. Yeah. It'll be it different, it more will. or less. It'll be yeah. different, won't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I mean, great advice, mate. So, mate, we've been chatting for ages. It's been have a re- yeah. really good yeah, conversation. No, it's been great. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it's been great. Hope you have. Yeah, no, it's been fantastic, Robbie. Really enjoyed it. Listen, so... Let's wrap it up, mate, because like I say, it's about an hour and a half, maybe longer than that. But I hope that people are really able to take some value from what we've spoke about. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. Mate, we, well, we're two business owners, construction business owners. Um, Trying to be honest about things as well. Yeah, that's, and yeah. that's that's key because there's... Mate, there's too much sugar-coated shit out there, isn't there? Uh, it's my take on things, yeah. It is. Yeah. And, and, and I, I will be at the forefront of people calling that shit out all the time. Um, if I feel like I have to. And that's sort of why I do this, because I and talk with people yeah, like you, yeah. because I want people like me, like yourself, to really say what they think and talk about their experiences, not be afraid to be honest. Like I just said, oh, mate, 18 months of development at 30, 38 grand. I've just wasted 18 months of my life, I feel. Yeah, but you also learn something from it, I could have yeah. Listen, I could have flipped that... We, we, we could have flipped that land on and earned triple the profit each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this, and then, so you've got to look at it, haven't you? But exit strategies are exit. You've got to look at different options, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, at the time, had when we priced it up before COVID, the, the margins were better, and then, boom, COVID, prices, it all went crazy. Yeah. And it was just like... Worst time, bad yeah. timing for yeah. us to be starting a build Absolutely, or, yeah. or, or, or be in the early stages of groundworks on yeah. a build when yeah. that happened. Yeah. It was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, what else is going to fucking go wrong? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it all did. And unfortunately, we had to pay on the back end for it and that was just a lesson learned. Yeah. Because had we flipped that on and sold it off, before that even happened, we'd have just been laughing in the sunset. <laughs> you know what uh, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But it hasn't killed you, so it'll make you stronger. Nah, yeah. It, so, and totally. I've still took money. And yeah, at the end yeah. of the day, I haven't come out of it with a negative. If I'd have come out of there minus 38 grand... This might be a different conversation. It would have hurt a bit more, yeah. Yeah, that would have fucking hurt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would have hurt. Yeah. But it didn't. And yeah, so if anyone wants to, um, I know you said you only started your Instagram like two weeks ago, but if anyone wants to contact you or watch what you do, how can they do that? Yeah, so at PI Building Services on. All one word? Yeah. All, all, PI Building Services. Yeah, on Instagram. Uh, and we're PI Building Services on Facebook as well. Sweet. Uh, yeah, and I'm Don Willis. Um, but yeah, just put us on there and all the details are on there. Um, and we're trying to put interesting, different co- like content up as well, if you see what, not just Engaging too... Engaging yeah, content. Too, yeah, not too generic, uh, just something a bit different and like, you know. And where are you based? So... Just for anyone that's listening that of, might want a contract yeah, or something. so Northampton, Bedfordshire, sort of, you know, a little bit into Cambridgeshire. So all around that sort of... That sort of area. Sweet. So we do an hour away around Northampton, basically. All like Milton Keynes yeah, way Milton and all that Keynes, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So if anyone ever wants to contact you... Yeah, please do. Around yeah. that area. Yeah, no, we're always interested in... PI Building Services. PI Building Services, yeah. Dominic Willis on Dom- Facebook. 
Facebook. Dominic Willis and PR Building Services on Facebook as well. So, Sweet. Yeah. All right, Dom, listen, it's been really good to have you in today. Yeah, thanks very thanks much. Thanks for coming. Appreciate it. Bosh. The T-Hurts. Proudly brought to you by eGrowth Media.